Until Death, The Diary of Molly Sidon, a Mysterious Geek Production, Episode 1. Featuring the voice talents of Geekums, Poke Jed Servo, Lightning Bolt, Cheeto Bandito 81, and Ed Marable. Until Death, The Diary of Molly Sidon. What you are about to listen to is about a brave young woman recounting the events that happened through a serious epidemic that led corpses to rise and to eat human flesh. Please, listen with sympathy for this girl, for she had encountered many frightening sights that would lead many people to go insane. Thank you, and I hope this will stress the importance of education on ZOEP, the Zombie Outbreak Escape Procedure. No one thinks it'll ever happen to them until it finally does. Don't be stupid. Be safe. January 21st. It's been five days since I got here. I've tried my best to survive. But to be honest, I don't know how much longer I can hold out down here. You're probably a bit confused as to what I'm talking about. So let me clear things up for you. About two weeks ago, six people were admitted into the North Ford Hospital with dark red rashes and a fever. The doctors said they couldn't figure out what was wrong with them. They guessed it to be some type of allergic reaction or something. So, they sent the people home. It seems to be an allergic reaction. Take these pills for tonight and rest up at home. A day later, more people were admitted into the hospital with the same exact symptoms. From then on, the patients were flooding in like no tomorrow. The symptoms were getting worse each day, too. Extremely high fevers, vomiting blood, clammy skin, intense weakness of the body, diarrhea, and even large flakes of skin would fall off some of the patients. There were so many people in the hospital, the doctors and nurses had to fit a two-person room with about five. The whole town was getting sick. It was so horrible. Sadly, within a few days, my family had caught the infection. I felt bad when they were admitted into the hospital with a serious fever of 102. This infection was getting so bad that people began dying from it. My friends and family, they're dead. My father was the last one to go. Molly, I'll always be with you. I felt my world crashing down upon me as I cried myself to sleep. I was so alone. (sighs) Hold on, I... Okay. It got even more tragic, and not the least bit bizarre. Five days ago, the craziest and most horrifying things began to happen. It all started when a corpse in the coroner's office woke up from the table and took a gigantic bite Yeah, you heard me correctly. He took a bite out of the coroner's neck. After that, all hell broke loose. Soon, the people who died from the infection were reanimating, and they were trying to eat the remaining people on the streets. The whole town was overrun with zombies in a matter of hours. Well, I've been calling them zombies anyways. Anyway, the infection was now a full-on outbreak. It got into our small town of North Ford, and the city now lies in ruin. I stayed home all the time, following the reports on the news. Well, when the reporters were still alive, that is. And as you can see here, the police are doing their best to take care of this dire situation. The police got into the fray, (laughs) but they were easily taken over within minutes. The news crew was taken out pretty quickly after due to the fact they were standing right at the scene. I can still hear that poor forsaken anchor screaming bloody murder for her life. Poor fool. What about me, you ask? Well, at the moment, I'm sitting alone in a dark room, down in the school's basement. My home wasn't safe. The zombies were getting through my barricade of some wood planks on the windows and couches by the doors. I knew I would be trapped in my own home, 
if they manage to break through. So, at the right time, I grabbed my mother's keys to her van and bolted out the door like a jackrabbit on fire. The Walking Dead were spread around my yard, so I had an easy getaway to the car. Where can I go? I whispered to myself as I pulled out of the driveway and onto the road. After a few minutes of driving, I had made up my mind to go to school. I know, I wouldn't want to go there on a regular day, but at the time, I thought it was a good idea. There were so many reasons to go to school. There are hallways to lose a monster in, a lot of rooms to escape into, many vending machines and candy in the school store. Chairs and desks would make great barricades, and the school had books so I can bide my time with that. To be honest, this place sucks. I thought there would be more survivors here, and maybe we'd all call for help. Boy, was I wrong. No one is alive here anymore. Well, that I know of. I'll talk more later on. I'm a little tired and I want to sleep. If I can get any sleep being this scared for my life. I'll explain more tomorrow night. If I can see tomorrow night, that is. Good night.